Okay, welcome to part three. What we're reviewing in this part is continuing pretty much straight from where we left off, which was here. So we've got our plugin now. We can actually get the player. So we can just do plugin, get server, get player, which is that there. And then we're just going to pass in the first argument, which is the player's name, or it should be. Okay, so we'll just import this. And then what we need to do is add this player to the ban list. So what we'll do is we'll do this. No, we won't. We'll do plugin, band players, add, uh, ban. Nope, not ban. Oh uh, dear. Okay, we'll add arg zero because ban might be null. We don't know that for sure yet, and that means that they're now banned. And then what we'll do is if the player is not equal to null. We'll just kick them because they've been banned and you don't want them to still be on the server. That doesn't make any sense. So we'll just say uh, ban kick player. You have been banned from this server. Sad face. Okay, that is that done. And then just down here, what we'll do is send a message to the person that executed the command or the thing that executed the command in green just saying uh, player name so arg0 has been banned from this server no sad face here because need to appear professional I don't know ah, typing right there we go so that should pretty much work obviously we need to add it to our plugin.yml and define this as the executor so let's go ahead and do that what we'll do is just make a new entry under commands called ban and who's that for add a description bans a player from the server add a usage line which is ban player name Technically, technically, we should add the message to this as well because we added a message. But uh, don't worry about that. That was from the previous tutorial, really. Anyway, so back in our plugin class, what we're going to do is just copy this line, like so. Change kick to ban, and change kick to ban. And again, this will need to be imported because it's not in the same package. Um, I spelled it wrong, but oh well. Wait. Okay, I spelt that one wrong. Well, let's correct that, otherwise people will get angry. Wow, how did I not, how did I not spot that? Uh, never mind. There we go. Fixed. Rename. Uh, change to. Fixed. And then the import will need to be changed. So there you go, there's a tip. Don't spell things wrong, otherwise you have to faff about changing everything. Anyway. That is our command setup. Um, so what we need to do next is just have the list save on server shutdown, which we can do using the on disable here. So where we previously called load, we can just call save. So we can just do this, ban players, save. And to be fair, what you could do is call the save method in the ban executor to save the list when you ban a new player. But uh, it's not strictly necessary, um, since, well, you know, it would, wouldn't hurt, but um, you should never need to do that really, because the server, in theory, should shut down all the time. It's up to you how you do this. This is just an example of how to store lists, not how to make a good banning plugin. Anyway, so we should be ready to test that out now, so let's start, the, well, let's export the plugin first, then let's start the server up. Well, let's stop the server and then start it up, and then we'll just try banning someone from the um, from the console. So, if I just do ban, you can see we get the usage, which means the command is defined well or correctly. So let's just ban nobody, and nobody has been banned from the server, which is an odd sentence, but never mind. So what we can do then is. Um, stop the server and see if the nobody gets written to the file 
So it stopped successfully, and let's have a look in the folder, and you can see there in the preview that oh, I was in the wrong window, and it's too big, and I can't minimize it, and it's gone ridiculously small. No jokes there, please. So there you can see we've got nobody in the file, which is good. Um, and then if we load this back up, it will work, basically. It's not really a way to test that until we've done the next bit. So I'll just delete that for now, because I'm not going to be signing in as nobody. Anyway, let's go back to the code, and we will add the listener to actually um, block the player from connecting if they are banned. So this is a pretty simple thing to do. We're going to add it in here, so in our main package. We'll add a new class, and we'll call it access... Actually, no, we won't. We'll call it uh, player login listener. Okay. Yes. And this will implement a listener, like so, which needs to be imported, as usual. There we go. So inside of here, we don't really need... Well, we do need the plugin, actually. I was just about to say we don't really need the plugin, so we'll do the old constructor creation thing that we have to do about 10 times and it always takes a little bit too long and that's why my videos are all 8 minutes no, that's not a long time I'm 20 minutes so we'll make a private property called access control nope, the type access control called plugin then we'll set plugin equal to plugin there we go Luckily, after doing it about 800 times, you get pretty quick at typing that out. So, yeah, there you go. Right, so, what we're going to do is define a public method, which is going to handle our player logins. So what we'll do is create a method which is going to be done on player uh, login. And it's going to be, its, it's parameter is going to be the player login event which we're going to just call event except event spelt right I think it's player login event yeah okay um, and also what we need to do is add our line above to make the well to register the event with the server which is event no is it event handler let's see if that imports alright yes and we want to set the priority in here priority we'll set that to event priority and we'll just set this to normal and that'll need to be imported because oh okay sorry about that that was a bit of a jump cut there but I was being a bit blind um, there's a semicolon on the end of this line that shouldn't be there and now it'll import correctly um, I was just convinced I'd spelt it wrong when I hadn't uh, and also, something else that's probably worth mentioning here is that a new thing has been added to the event system since my last video, which means you don't have to do the old if event is cancelled thing here. You can just have the event handler not pass in cancelled events just by adding ignore cancelled equals true in there. Um, that's probably wrong. Yeah, it's that one. <laughs> Double L. And that will um, prevent and this being called if the event's already been cancelled. So this is a handy little tip, makes it a bit shorter, a bit more efficient, it's a bit nicer really. But anyway, that's that. So in here, what we want to do is check the player name, so we can get the player name from the event. So we can do if event get player get name. Spelled wrong. Oh dear. Get name. Like so. And we'll just call that player name as a string then we can check that in our list so we can do if plugin band players contains player name event set result which is actually sort of like set cancelled um, you set the result equal to a result which is a very awkward thing kick band and that just prevents them connecting and um, we can also set the message by doing event set kick message so you could just say you have been banned or something along those lines it's a very awkward way to do that really that should be sort of like a cancelled thing I don't know but um, that's how you do it anyway
I mean, most likely that's probably going to change, I assume, at some point. Um, I don't know. Right, anyway, now we've done that, we can test this out. Um, so that's basically it, really. So, let's export our plugin for hopefully the almost final time. Give the server a start. Looks like I remember to turn it off this time, which is kind of handy. And I'll just connect as me to show that it doesn't block players that aren't banned. So let's just quickly log in, and hopefully it will actually, um, you know, it'll actually work. And it did, so that's good. So I'll log out. Actually, I'll stay logged in and see if we get kicked. That's probably a worthwhile test. So I'll go back to the console. I'll just say ban me. And you can see that I was kicked, which is good. And we'll just look at our game window to show that. So you have been banned from this server. A little sad face. And if I try and reconnect, in theory, if I did everything right, I can connect, which is completely wrong. So let's disconnect and have a quick look at our console. No errors. Have a quick look at our code. Um, why didn't that work then? Uh, let's see. Oh. Okay, apologies. Um, the reason it didn't work is the reason that, for some reason, I always forget to do this in tutorials. I think I get a bit panicky that I'll forget and then it makes me forget. We forgot to register the event. Like a. Well, I'm sure you knew I meant to do that, but whatever. Right. What we need to do to fix the problem is actually register the events with the server. So, just before we. Well, actually, just after we define our commands, what we'll do is the basic one line register event thing. So, we'll do this get server gets plugin manager register events um, that one and our listener is a new instance of our player login listen and we have to pass in this and as a second parameter this and again that's just basic events and that's all covered in my other tutorials anyway so give that an export and even though we've shut down the server and started it up again, it should still work, actually. Um, because it was, the value um, was specified, you know, it was written to our file. So actually this is quite a good way of testing if it loaded correctly as well. So let's try and, three people are on my server, that's odd. Let's try and log in. Sorry, th there we go, you've been banned. So that means that um, it's all working, basically. So the absolute final thing I want to show you is how to limit this to... Um, being run by operators only um, because you know you don't want everyone banning everybody that'd be chaos so what we'll do is just go back to our code and we won't really test it out but um, it's pretty simple actually so let's just look at our ban executor and just once we've determined they've used the right syntax what we can do is say if um, well we can see if this we can do that is op like so, so if sender is op equals false just show a message so sender send message chant color chat color red you do not have permission to use this command and then again you can obviously do the same thing and we do need to return here so that it stops running Whoa, it's got permission catastrophically wrong. There we go. Um, so yeah, that is basically that. Um, and again, you can obviously do the same thing for the kick command. Um, and again, I won't bother testing that because this video is basically the length where it gets annoyingly long. So yeah, that is the basics of using commands and also a nice way of storing lists. So yeah, that's that. So thanks for watching and come back for future videos where we'll be, actually in the next part, is a spoiler, we're going to be doing um, some stuff with custom events, which are pretty fun. So yeah, there you go.